This is Maria, the big one. Maria, Maria, the big one. Uh, I mean, the stadium, um, you see all the lightning, everything regarding the lights, the poles. I mean, the only thing that, that stood was the cement uh, construction. Everything mm. else was just oh my destroyed. God. The um, field was completely with water. Right. It just destroyed um, the complete stadium. Wow. This was pulled out by the wind, right? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and Pudge was saying that this, some of these things are actually inside the stadium. They, they were inside the stadium. If you see the, the base, right here is one it of just two went of out of the base. This is two of the, of the main towels that, that they used to have it here in the field. And mm -hmm. oh, this is probably 40 years old. Jeez. You know, 40 or 50 years old. So you guys are in pretty much when the ball I was uh, built back in the day, yeah. and just think about having this piece of steel, which it weights a lot. Right. You know, just get up in the air and fly away. Here is is one of the uh, amazing things that you guys can see how powerful mm -hmm. this is the that base. was. That's so the base. this is the one of the base areas, and you can see that all of this is just like. Mm. Like, like if you take something out of there and go mm. up in the air, yeah, that's what happens. That's, that's just the wind. So imagine, imagine that's this the was wind. the wind was 160 miles an hour, steady, mm. and gusty winds over 200, and that was for 12 hours, oh nonstop, 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 one way, and then the other way for for 12 hours, and so like Raul. Well, we just mentioned this ballpark was no roof. Everything was everything was out. The roof was out, mm -hmm. and the field was full of water. With water, and not See, only this ballpark. I mean, the whole mm -hmm. uh, the whole island. Where were you at the time? Were you here in Caguas, or no? I was I was uh, in um, Isla Verde, which is okay. in the See? Carolina Isla area. Verde. Yeah, Isla Verde. See, uh, I was in in my apartment. We had shuttles and everything, but. It was uh, it was very very scary. <laughs> we decided uh, we were the whole family there. Uh, we had brought in our daughters, mm -hmm. and we just decided everybody to be in one room, and we just stayed there the whole night. Uh, we we never went to sleep, yeah. and it was like uh, you know the building was going to be destroyed. That's that, it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I do have friends in which they left the apartment and they went to the stairs, exit stairs, and they stayed there for 10, 12 hours. 160 mile an hour wind. Have you ever caught a pitcher that threw 160 miles an hour? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, 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 I catch them 100 and it's, <laughs> and it's, and it's really coming fast. Oh but my God. Just so so we're entering Caguas Criollo Stadium. That's right. My home. You're, you're the owner uh -huh. of the team and Pudge played for many years. Well, I, this is what I started my career. I signed professional baseball when I was 16. I yeah, signed so with the Texas Rangers, and, and the team that drafted me in Puerto Rico was Caguas Criollos. Wow. I was in the big league in 91, but from 91, I played 11, 12 years here every year, every year. after 162 game season. In the nice. in the U.S., so I just I live here at the time, and and I was uh, one of those guys that I have great discipline in in myself. Wake up in the morning, working out, you know, just go do my my training, and then in the afternoon I come here, one two o'clock in the afternoon, and and play at seven o five. Helps my career tremendously. In the era that I play back in the nineties, a lot of the uh, major major league players love to come here and play. Right. You know, they, they normally take a few months off and, and then in December, they come and play one month here and then they play the, the playoff. That's what I did of the last years that I was here playing. Uh, before that, I came here from since day one and started playing, so. You guys know, I was telling Raul that my wife's from about a block away. Yeah, yeah. Aguas Criollos <laughs> were the team, the team. Yeah. And I watched you play one night with her uncle 
like Pudge, Pudge. <laughs> You're like, hey, hey, hey. I think I was just another face in the crowd. <laughs> what does the baseball mean to this community? Because yeah, Caguas, because exactly. this is historic, right? This is hallowed ground. This stadium yeah. and all of the, yeah. everyone well, who came is, through here. Yeah, how many? Number one, this is the oldest stadium. Uh, the stadium was inaugurated in 1948, and it took a break after <laughs> Hurricane Maria. I don't think it's not a better place to come and play than here because the fans, I mean, as we can see, mm. yeah. you know, they're very close. Right. You know, even it's, even though there's a one level yeah. stadium, but look how close it is from the playing field. And and Caguas always has this uh, fan base. Mm. That they always come. It doesn't matter if we are losing games or winning games, they still they still come over here and, and enjoy themselves. This is a, the stadium is sitting in, in the neighborhood, like back here, they're all yeah, these the people houses that live are right there. behind here, they're no, all coming to the ballpark. Are, they can yell from the house yeah. and you can hear it here. <laughs> no, 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 literally when this is full, they are sitting on the top of the, of the, of the fence yeah. watching yeah. the game. That that's, does. that's how loyal they are. When we retired the number seven of, of um, Ivan, of Poch, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you could not have one person in. You remember yeah, that yeah. even oh even the um, bomberos, the uh, fire, fire, department, fire department, closed the, the doors and said nobody else no can fires. come. No fires. No more, no. <laughs> You're actually, you were born in Manatee. And Manatee you grew, up grew up in Vega Baja. Vega Baja. Baja. Yeah, I, remember, I remember that when Raul retired the, the, the number and it was a nice, nice event. And, and the good thing was that threw the first pitch backwards. I threw it from, uh, yeah. from oh, home to second base. Did you really? <laughs> yeah, oh, you yeah. did the throw down? Yeah. Home, threw it from home to second base. So all the fans that was there that night, they didn't expect mm. it yeah. for me to do that. And <laughs> and so I was uh, I was at the pitching rubber, and I just called the catcher and said, no, we switch and go to second base. <laughs> so I went, I threw it in the air, which that was a good thing. So yeah, good I, I didn't look bad myself doing that. Baseball is such a big deal of Puerto Rico. I guess it is by far the most popular sport. Everyone in the United States or here or whatever grows up with baseball. We talk about take me out to the ball and stuff yeah. like that. But an experience here in Puerto Rico or here in Caguas is somewhat different. Starting with the food, maybe not starting, but it, maybe ending, maybe all the way through. All the way through. All the way, so all the way through. What would you get if you come to the, uh, the well, Caguas you know, Criollo Stadium? This is a, a pizza empanadilla. Mm -hmm. This is chicken. Me. And then this is a cheese dog. Wait, but, that's a cheese dog? Yeah, that's a cheese dog. <laughs> but, but. Pretty good though. Puerto Rican <laughs> cheese dog. Really Puerto good. Rican cheese dog. <laughs> <laughs> but then we have here pork. Oh, and this okay. is oh huge. God. Then we have the tostones. Carne frita. You know? Yeah. This is carne frita yeah. con tostones. In addition to that, there's also beans and all that so stuff. Can, can we this try, is can we try it? something? Oh, we can try it. Okay. We can try it. I'm going to do the acapurria de carne. And what about you guys? What do y'all want? I'll, I'll tell you Coach something. I, I better have the chicken because of my wife. <laughs> she may see this. Then if, 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 if she sees this, I'm, I'm going to be dead. So yeah. I, I take, I, the, I the, take the carne frita. <laughs> but, uh, this is most probably different from the States, from the stadiums. Mm. And I think also, Muy amable. Yeah, also something different is this song of the stretching, which I was telling you. <laughs> yeah, seventh inning stretch in the States, we say, take me out to the ball nah, game. Here it's, gotcha. it's what it is. ¿Qué te parece, Cholito? ¿Qué te parece? So ¿Qué te parece, Churito? Yeah. Okay, cholito. Cholito. Oh, cholito. 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 Ah, okay, un Cholito. So sí. that's, that's what we have. But that's what Caguas has. Mm. This is the only team that has that song. That's what I love when about we, when really? we play When we play that song, we play that song in the seventh inning. Mm. And, and on top of our dugout, mm. it was a lady that was the number one fan, Carmen. Mm -hmm. And she always step on the top of the of the, dug of the dugout, dugout and start dancing and makes everybody get up. <laughs> everybody and get everyone. up and follow what she's doing. ¿Qué te parece, Cholito? ¿Qué te parece? ¿Qué te parece, Cholito? ¿Qué te parece? And everybody is standing up. Everybody, sta everybody is standing up. No, seriously, everybody is standing up over here and sing at the same time. Wow. At the same time doing the, doing between the, between innings. Yeah, that was That's in the awesome. seventh inning. And then they, they played that 
they play that first and then they play the seven inning stretch like they're really yeah, like the normal the one real, yeah. the real that's what i love typical. about puerto rico because every town has its own thing yeah carnival mm -hmm. they have their own mascaras yeah. Yeah. you have your own musica yeah. you have your own art you have and then you have in the stadium oh, we have a mascot too we yeah. have a a mascot. We have yeah. one here. You have a mascot. Yeah. yeah. So it's here, just yeah. very yeah. much, you know, this. What is the mascot for the criollos? You bring someone on a horse, what? like the uh, <laughs> logo. <laughs> uh, criollo is what we call the um, uh, uh, criollos, local people. Mm -hmm. You know, country people, local people. Mm -hmm. Is it feel like a working man's team, or is this like, is it like a prima donna, you know? Caguas, what would you say? What, I say what is the Caguas, I think, I think Caguas Criollo is the rival of all the teams oh, really? that we play against. Mm -hmm. We have big rival with Santurce, mm -hmm. big rival with San Juan, mm -hmm. even Mayagüez. Maya I think Mayagüez and Caguas are there. This club is so uh, well famous mm -hmm. that, I mean, names yeah. that they're in the Hall of Fame place. Yeah. In this name, name a few of them. Come on. Tell Roberto them. Alomar, Poch Rodriguez, of course. Uh, uh, Roberto Clemente played Clemente. for the Cowboys mm. Criollos. Uh, uh, Hank Aaron, Hank Aaron, uh, uh, yeah. Mike Schmidt. Mm. Uh, wow. Alex Sandy Cora, Co Sandy, Sandy Colfax, Colfax, Alex, Colfax. Cora, Alex mm. Cora played. Alex Cora Reggie. played here. He was my uh, manager and my general manager. Oh, really? Oh, yeah? Yeah. 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 So Alex is. Um, <laughs> Another uh, he local that. hero. Yeah, so, yeah. Raul, local when you hero. when you came in the first time to the stadium, after with all this history, and you saw the the way the stadium looked, what did you feel? Oh, yeah. Sad. Uh, yeah, very sad. Very, very sad. Uh, 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 not only because of the stadium, but also the community. Mm. Uh, it was very tough. Did you feel like it was your responsibility? I mean, because you are part of the heart and soul of this community. Yeah. Communities so when something yeah. happens to the community, you have to, you know, you have to respond at some level, yeah. right? Yes, yes it is. And we sat down with the mayor. Yeah. We wanted to be there for, for, for the community, but we wanted to do it organized. Mm. So um, the um, mayor was very helpful in, in leading us to be able to go to the different to go communities. To the right places. Yeah. You know, in, like in the beginning, it was a massification. It was just giving to everybody. But then after that, it was just putting food in, in, in cases and then taking mm -hmm. uh, cases of water. We drive a, a semis, like containers, mm -hmm. up to the, uh, to the center of the island. Mm -hmm. And Raul and I and all the helpers that we have, plus Raul's employees from his, from his company, they all donate uh, their time to go. It's unbelievable how how hard it is to get to uh, places like that and then when you when you get there with waters or a bag you can see that there's the desperate of the yeah. people. You know we sometimes we have to just uh, slow hit, uh, slow them down because yeah. they don't have anything. anything. Yeah. Nothing, this is their best nothing. chance. This is that, that's yeah. right. Where were you in the hurricane? I was I was at home. I was in yeah, Florida, yeah, but my family, my family, my parents was here. Yeah. Yeah. And and it was scary in in the beginning because I couldn't I couldn't contact them yeah. like for I say two three weeks because no phone. I mean I mean no no power. Everything was shut down. And not yeah. nothing. And so I was trying to uh, communicate with with my parents. And the only way I communicate with my parents was I have a friend that works in the government. Yeah. That works in the government. And he, he flew in the helicopter to where my parents live. Mm. And then they saw, saw them, you know, coming out of the house. And they, he calls me and said, they're OK. So like my wife, there were many Puerto Ricans watching this kind of in horror on the United States side. And like you, we couldn't communicate, my yeah. wife couldn't communicate to her brother. We flew here three weeks or a, a month after we, we did a, we did our work, you know, like myself and a bunch of uh, celebrities, Ricky Martin, when we came on the, on the plane that JetBlue donated to us. So we flew, you know, like all of us on the plane with the plane full of, you know, of uh, supply. See. And we land here, and I never forget this. The pilot 
the airport was closed. Mm. No, no flights in and out of here. So it was only us able to land and leave the next day. But when we coming to Puerto Rico, the pilot said, I'm gonna bring the plane 3,000 feet about the island and we're gonna go around the island. So before we landed in San Juan, we, we came in through Ponce at 3,000 feet and go all the way through Ceiba and Fajardo, which is the other side of the island and came through to San Juan. And I'm not kidding you. What I saw, it was like, let's think about a big ball of fire comes through for, for 12 hours and left. That was the only thing I saw. Trees just like with nothing on it, with nothing on it. It looks like, you know, like, like 12, 15, 20 years, 50 years behind. Yeah. We went like this. Like this, you know, like from, from when we was, we went like 50, 60 years behind. And you know, they knew more than us, really, because we did not have any communication. So uh, everything that uh, videos and, and TV and, and everything was going to the States, to our people in the States, but here, but here we just could not see. We had to try to get the, uh, the old um, antennas Oh. to see if we could get some TV image, you know? But it was very tough. But we this, know is, what was this happening. is one thing that I just wanted to really mention it, and I really mean it, from this man right here. This man right here, right after, he went out. He went out to helping people. Next day, even though that he was going through some stuff, family-wide, but he went out and bought some generators and go to different places and look for whatever whatever he can find to go to places and and helping people you know we are good friends obviously and hmm. and he calls me and i called out so raul what can we do let's let's do something big for puerto rico so i start doing my my work in the u.s with catalina and we just you know i collect a lot of stuff in dallas Arlington, Fort Worth, and put it in a warehouse in Miami. Same, same thing. I did all that, and then we, we bring it over here by containers, and and Raúl, you know, receive it here. Because at the time it was kind of like tough bringing it in because the poor authorities and all that to bring things out. But he just did it, just right away, and basically since since day one he was helping it and he's still doing it today. Because even though there's three years ago, there is some places still in the island that needs been suffering help, by the storm. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think something important and, and this is an example that that Poch mm -hmm. uh, gave to maybe many famous people is this that there is a need for supplies, but there is also a need to strengthen the mental health of the people mm -hmm. and it's not the same thing mm -hmm. than I giving you the supplies than Poch giving the supplies that's why I mean it's important to get help but Poch coming in mm. and going to the mountains and going to the people and giving the cases mm. you know I mean uh, yeah. he's a hero in Puerto Rico mm. so what are they saying gee you know Poch came to my house, yeah. you know? We didn't send it over here. Yeah. We came with the products and with the supply, and we went and gave it away. I mean, baseball is baseball, you know? And Puerto Rico is baseball. We say that Caguas is baseball, you know? But yeah. they, that, that's one of our sayings. And, and Pittsburgh Pirates. Caguas tastes like yeah. baseball. Tastes like baseball, that's what we, we say. But when you go into what Roberto Clemente did for the Latin American uh, players, well, it, it keeps on, that history keeps on. Pittsburgh Pirates, they, I mean, they came here and, and we did the same thing with them. Uh, Boston Red Sox through Alex Cora, yeah. they uh, brought in airplanes of supplies and everything. And I'd say that uh, and, and it's incredible to, to say that in these supplies that we would receive from the states, yeah. we would have the cans in which they would say, 
I mean, it's tough to say this, yeah. but they would say, we are with you, uh, stay strong. So we did receive from our people, but also from the American the people, American we did people. receive a lot of, of supplies to our people. So I think it was a, it was tough, but at the same time, it was a rewarding experience yeah. for all we of the Puerto Ricans. We, we learned, learned a lot from that. We learned a lot from that. I left this beautiful island when I was 16 years old, not speaking English, not speaking the language. I went to United States and I went there for for a purpose. It's just to become the best that I can be mm -hmm. in, in baseball, in my position, which is behind the plate. You know, a lot of challenge, a lot of obstacle, a lot of hard stuff, of course, of course. But you learn from all those things so you can be a better so you can be a better person. And obviously the language was one of the problems that I had, but the best thing that I have is that I didn't, I wasn't afraid to speak. I tried to learn as quick as that I can, because as my position, I had to communicate with the pitchers, you know, as clear as possible so we can be on the same page. But it was, uh, it was a good challenge yeah. in my life, because look, I left Begawa, Sign the sport that I love. I'm 19 years old. My dream comes true, mm -hmm. and I played 21 years mm -hmm. in something that I love. And now, you know, that's what I. That's what a lot of people, friends of mine and fans, know me more. The baseball player, Pudge, the person between the white lines, mm -hmm. uh, and that comes from from home. Yep. You know, that's how. They raise you, and, and, and to me, I say that I have three kids. I teach them the same, respect, be nice with everybody. I have a son that play baseball like me, and if you can, and if you can talk to him, you can tell how humble yeah. he is as far as discipline. So, so family <laughs> is a very much a major part of Puerto Rico. Oh. We are very, we, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico is a family, si. because if you see Puerto Rico is 100 by 35, it's yeah. very small, and I'm going back to when the storm happens, it's unbelievable how happy we are, that right after, a couple of weeks later, there was people on the street with music, El dancing and, and yeah. having yeah. fun, why, because that's, that's the way we are. We are happy people. Mm. We we like to have fun. We respect each other. You know, we're not a kind of, you know, angry type of uh, people here in Puerto Rico. And, and families are families. You know, Raul has his own family. I got my own family, but Raul... We are family. Raul, family is like my family. We all like so, so close together. It's because that's Puerto Rico. I'm part of the family now. <laughs> no, seriously, my Puerto Rican family, they treated me almost from day one like I'm part of the family. Yeah. Okay. And really on behalf of my Puerto Rican family, and I say this without getting emotional, thank you, Raul, thank you, Pudge, for what you thank do you, thank you. for this island, for the people. It's a, it's a tremendous thing to be with you here. Thank I you. I appreciate it. Did you know that they call in a flaco? <laughs> Why? Why does it come? Oh, it's so it skinny. Flaco. flaco means skinny. I'm skinny. And then the flaco guy is el gordo, right? Yeah. I, I, love, I love this because you know, Ivan or Pudge, when you come inside, you say hi to everybody. Everyone knows you. Whatever. Everybody knows. You talk about the community and the family and stuff like that. It happens inside the baseball stadium. It happens outside in the community. It happens all over. And so, well, you know, I have been, let's say, in a restaurant with mm. Pudge and, and his wife and my wife, and I guess it's a dinner of three mm. because Pudge is always taking pictures <laughs> with, with the rest <laughs> of the people and, 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 and he knows he has no by, problem and by with the that. way you know that Raul and I we do business together yeah. Yeah. We do, of yeah. course we do business together. Yeah. 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 so but let me tell you he, he said that he he went with a dream yeah and his dream was to you know be the best player well, I'll tell you something. He got the dream because he is the best catcher ever in baseball. <laughs> All of And it. something interesting, something mm -hmm. interesting about Puerto Rico and baseball is this, that, I mean, we are 3.2 million people in the island. And we have, and, and I, I am proud of say, to say this, I mean, the best right fielder in, in the game is Roberto Clemente. Ever. Ever. 
the best second baseman is Roberto Alomar. And the best catcher is Poch Rodriguez. Yeah. We have nine positions, three positions. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe it could be discussed, but let's say maybe in some of them they could say they're not the best, but they are one of the best. Mm. And Puerto Ricans, three positions. And then we haven't talked about Edgar Martinez as a, a designated, designated hitter, him. one of the best. So that's why we say culture of Puerto Rico starts with baseball. Hall of Fame is Puerto Rican. We got the most mm. Hall of Famer by state in baseball. Wow. Say, how do you say it in Spanish? Caguas taste like baseball. Caguas sabe a baseball. baseball. <laughs> and that's it. Caguas sabe, sabe a baseball. A baseball. <laughs> Yes. In more oh, ways yeah. than one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it also because sabe of carne yeah. frita. Carne frita and, yeah. Because yeah. of players yeah. and food. Yeah. And food. Yeah, this is one of the best Thank stadiums. I can't wait till you guys Thank get you. it open Thank again. Oh, yeah, well, Raul, well, you're, congratulations. You're yeah. invited. Yeah. You're invited yeah. to no, be here is, in the opening. It's an honor to be here with you guys. And really, yeah. thank you guys for inspiring everybody. There's so much more to explore, and we want you to join us on The Good Road. For more in-depth content, meet us on the internet at thegoodroad.tv. Hear more great stories, connect to organizations, and make sure you download our podcast, Philanthropology.